Hello sisters, for the month of July, as a British Society Presidency, we are concentrating on our news video on patriotism and what it means to us. Now, when I think about the 4th of July, I think about all the fun times that families will be having together, like barbecuing or going on a picnic, going to the mountains or to the beach. In Corona, we used to have a 4th of July parade down Main Street every single year and we would even have an old airplane vintage flyover, which was a lot of fun to watch. Then at nighttime throughout America, people would be setting up the fireworks. But I want to think about the Founding Fathers and those signers of the Declaration of Independence and the sacrifices they gave on our behalf so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have enjoyed, that we enjoy to this very day. They gave their wealth and many times they gave their families and they also gave their lives so that we can have the freedoms at, to this very day and also for the restoration of the gospel to come forth. Now, when I worked at Disneyland, I loved being there at dusk because since 1955, they would have a flag retreat ceremony every single day at that time. And I had to stand there out of respect for the flag for 15 minutes and not move if, if I was in costume. And I loved it because I would, listen, I would listen to the band play all their songs like Yankee Doodle Dandy and My Country Tis the Day and America the Beautiful and, and so forth. There was a lot of fun listening to the band play. And then at some point in the ceremony, they would play all, the band would play all the different songs from the military divisions, like the Navy, the Army, the Marines, and, and those who are veterans or active military, if they were there watching the flag ceremony, when they heard their division play, they stepped forward and they would salute the flag and they would stand at attention. And I loved it to see, I loved it when I could see a, a World War II vet being wheeled up to the, to the circle. And, and salute the flag and sometimes I saw military men who have lost limbs. So after this little ceremony they would have the Dapper Dance sing the Star Spangled Banner and I loved watching the people because up until this point people were either exiting or coming into the park and they had no idea that the ceremony was going on until they heard the national anthem base being sung and they would stop most everyone would stop put their hand over their heart take their hat off and look up at the flag until it was uh, until it was lowered people still love america they love the flag and in my mind the flag and the national anthem go hand in hand now in 1812 um, the War of 1812, we were not doing very good. We were losing the battle. In fact, in 1814, um, Washington was, was burning. The British came and burned down Congress, the White House, the Treasury. In fact, President Madison and his wife Dolly had to escape so they would not be captured. And we were losing most all the battles. And it was pretty scary because we would have lost the United States of America to Britain at this point. Um, there was a man named called, his name was Dr. Bean, and he was a great man, a do great doctor, and, and he would help all the wounded, whether they were the British side or the American side, but he, he would help patch them up. And he was captured, and he was taken away on a ship, and he was going to be hung. But a lot of people loved this man, including British soldiers, soldiers. So they had a lot of people go to this ship to try and negotiate his release, and no one was able to do it. So they decided to ask a young lawyer called Francis Scott Key and he was also a poet and he had great negotiating skills so he and another man named Skinner went to the ship and took the well wishes of a lot, a lot of the British soldiers who said Dr. Bean is a good man and after some negotiating time he was able to get they were able to get the release of Dr. Bean however the British would not let them go because they had overheard what the attack plans that they were planning on um, in attacking Fort McHenry. So they said, you cannot leave yet. You cannot leave until the battle, this battle is over with. And then you'll be able to leave and we will 
the British will have won and there'll be no more United States of America. So they went down below with all the other prisoners of war and waited and listened. Uh, many times, all day long, they could hear the bombs going and all night, all night long. And, and during the night, Francis Scott would go up on deck to see if he could see the flag. And every time he'd look and a bomb would burst over the Fort McHenry, he wanted to make sure the flag was still flying, that they had not surrendered yet. And of course, it was flying. He said, it felt like Mother Earth had opened up and was spitting out and spewing all this sleet of gold bombs glaring all night long. The sound, the smells was just beyond their comprehension. And they waited and they waited and, and they were looking, Francis Scott Key kept looking over the horizon to see if, to see when the, uh, the sun would come up because he wanted to look at the fort to see if our flag was still flying and he waited and finally he could see the first dawn approaching. And he couldn't see it at first because there's so much smoke in the air that they could not see in the distance. And finally the smoke parted and he could see out in the distance the big American flag flying over Fort McHenry. Now they made that flag 42 by 30 feet. Huge flag. They wanted to make sure that all their enemies way up to sea could see that flag flying over the fort. And there it was still there. It was still blowing in the breeze. And, and Francis Scott Key was so overwhelmed with joy and happiness that he went downstairs and took out an envelope from his back pocket. And he started writing a poem. And I think the poem was called In Defense of Fort McHenry. Then they were finally released. And when he went ashore, he was able to finish up his poem. His brother-in-law put it to music and it was named the Star Spangled Banner. I love the Star Spangled Banner. I love the flag. And I am so grateful that I have the freedoms, that I can enjoy the freedoms that I enjoy to this very day. And I appreciate all of our founding fathers who sacrificed so much for us. Hi sisters. It is almost the 4th of July and I'm getting super excited. Um, this is my very favorite holiday of the year. Um, lots of people get really excited for Christmas. I get really excited for the 4th of July. Um, and I think that is just because I am so thankful to live in this country. I love this country so much. Um, <clears throat> and I, I'm just really grateful that this is where I have the opportunity to live. Um, I just wanted to share with you really quick a couple of fun little activities that you could do with your family. Um, the first one is this 4th of July word scramble. And um, this would be for older kids or just for adults. Um, and you probably want to cross it out down here on the bottom. It's got the answers or fold it or something. Um, but you can go through and you can try and figure out what the different patriotic words are. That one's kind of fun. And then the second <coughs> is a um, little trivia game and my mom sent me one of these a few years back and it's kind of become something that I do with my family each year um, it's not this exact same one the one we have is a little bit different but this one had a printable that we could connect with it so um, it goes through and asks you questions you could divide into two teams or um, you could just take turns pulling them out of a bowl and reading them and just seeing who who knows the most or can get the most answers right. Um, it doesn't even have to be a competition at all. It can be kind of fun just to see how much American history you know. Um, <clears throat> so it's two pages and they're kind of fun questions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, like on July 4th of what year was the 50th star added to the flag? That one's kind of fun. Um, just some different trivia questions like that. And then there's some fun ones too, like Americans eat approximately how many hot dogs each 4th of July? The answer to that question is 150 million. It's kind of crazy. But um, nevertheless, kind of a fun little trivia question. So um, I absolutely love American history. I love um, anything that has to do with 
our country and what has brought us here today. I am so thankful that I have the opportunity to live here in the United States of America. Um, I am super thankful for all those that are continually fighting for our freedoms, for um, <clears throat> our military, those that serve in the military have become a little bit more, even more so grateful for that one since my little brother joined the Air Force. Um, I'm thankful for all the police officers throughout the country that lay down their lives each day to make sure that we are safe and that um, we can enjoy the freedoms that we're so blessed to have. So I hope that each of us can sit down for a little bit and whether we play this trivia game or just do a little bit of research ourselves, hope that we can reflect on um, why, why it is that we're grateful to be living in this country. Hi sisters, happy almost 4th of July. <laughs> I have Lily here helping me today. We wanted to share something with you that is a fun 4th of July food idea that you can do if you're having a barbecue or if you're not, you just need something fun to make you feel festive for the holiday. We have a fun idea for you. It's quick, it's really easy, and it's delicious, right Lily? Yes. yes. Okay, we're gonna pull the camera down. We'll see if you guys can see this. Okay, there you go. So all you need is blueberries, strawberries, and some chocolate or yogurt covered pretzels. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. What do we do, Lily? How do we make this? We just put some strawberries right there and some pretzels right there. Strawberries, pretzels, strawberries, and we put some blueberries in a bowl. And that's how you make it. And what does it look like? It looks like the flag of America. Exactly. <laughs> so it's pretty easy. Um, you could obviously yeah. switch things out if you wanted to do more of a savory one. You could maybe do like red peppers and uh, like string cheese or the little bay bell cheeses or something like that. Um, but this is one that we've done before in the past. It's been a hit. It's delicious. It's really easy and it looks way fancier than it actually takes to make. So hopefully this is something that you can use with your family yeah, this year for the 4th of July. Yeah, and also describe it. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you have a wonderful 4th of July. So now that I have shared with you a fun little treat you can do for the 4th of July, I wanted to share a few thoughts that I had on patriotism and what that means to me. And so I've been thinking about that word and what patriotism actually means, what the word patriot means. So I looked up the definition of patriot and it is, a patriot is a person who vigorously supports their country and is prepared to defend it against enemies or detractors. And I love that definition. You know, when I think of those who founded our country, um, the people who originally fought for the freedoms that we enjoyed today, I'm so grateful for all they did. And I don't even know all they did other than, you know, what we've learned in history, but I'm grateful for them and the sacrifices that they made and the sacrifices that many people are still making today so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy here in America. What a wonderful, what a wonderful place to live and what a wonderful country, even despite, you know, all the, all the craziness that's happening, happening in the world. I'm, I'm grateful to live in such a wonderful place. Um, one of those rights, one of those freedoms that we all enjoy is the freedom of religion. And I'm so grateful that we are able to worship how we want, what we want, to believe what we want, and not be persecuted or um, attacked for that. I guess in some senses you could say beliefs are attacked, but we're able to, to worship as we choose here in America, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, Ultimately, we're able to exercise our moral agency, which is a, an essential part of God's plan of salvation. And what a wonderful thing that is that we have our agency and we are able to exercise it here in America. So um, I wanted to share something. So just last week, Elder Bednar, he spoke uh, on religious freedom, specifically, oh, just got a message. <laughs> Um, he specifically spoke on religious freedom and, and kind of what's going on with that in regards to COVID. Um, so I would highly, if you haven't heard his uh, address um, or read it, I will link it in the comments below. You can read it. It is so good. And he brings up so many points that I was like, wow, I didn't even think of that. Anyways, 
really good. <laughs> I can link that for you. But one of the, I want to read just a small part of it and how it goes along with um, just the idea of religious freedom and, and what a blessing that is. So he said, this time of restriction and confinement has confirmed for me that no freedom is more important than religious freedom. The freedom of religion properly has been called our first freedom. It is first not only because of its placement as the first right it, it, as the first right in the First Amendment, but also because of the paramount importance of respecting the moral agency of each person. Living even for a brief few weeks under the restrictions imposed on religious activity by COVID-19 is a stark reminder that nothing is more precious to people of faith than the freedom to, quote, worship Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience, close quote, and to openly and freely live according to our convictions. Ah, oh, so good. Yes, like that is the message that I would love to convey <laughs> in, my, in my short message is just, um, you know, having these restrictions and getting a taste of what it would feel like to have some of those religious freedoms taken away makes hopefully all of us realize what a blessing it is to have religious freedom here in this country and i'm so so grateful for that um it's a precious freedom that we enjoy and i hope that we will never take for granted that we will stand up and we will defend that freedom and that right and be true patriots um, in regards to that. So I am so grateful to live in America and I hope you all have a wonderful 4th of July. However you're celebrating it this year, I hope that you are able to take a little time and reflect on what patriotism means to you and what you're grateful for about our wonderful country. Happy 4th of July! Oh.